The positional play feature on Football Manager, it's huge. It affects 10 roles in the game of Football Manager. On today's show, I'm going to share with you three tactics and explain how the positional play feature works. I'm not going to critique the game while it's in beta. When the game launches on November the 6th, that's when I take a cold hard look at it. Meanwhile, these are my initial impressions of the game and where I'm very certain about how certain things work, I'm going to share them with you. Of course, you can catch me streaming on Twitch where I'm going to be crafting all kinds of tactics and putting this match engine through its paces. So what's this positional play feature? In a nutshell, it is the transformer of tactics. Yes. Think of cars, robots, robots to cars. Well, formations now will do the same thing. They go from playing as a 4-4-2. As they move up the pitch, they transform into something else. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, isn't this the same as last year? No, it is completely different because now they form partnerships. They never used to do this before because their move up and down the pitch was very temporary. Now, I can actually take a 4-4-2, wide 4-4-2, and turn it into a very narrow 4-4-2 when it's attacking, looking like the Brazilian box. We couldn't do that last year. And then when he has to defend, it drops back into a 4-4-2 again. On top of that, when these roles move into their new positions, they form partnerships. These partnerships are important because a DM will move into an MC spot, becomes a central midfielder. Then in the next phase of transition, it could move all the way up to the AMC spot and then form a partnership with the playmaker, telling the playmaker to push to one side as he helps the playmaker out in the final third. This is a fun feature. So let's take a look at this very simple formation. It's got three guys in midfield. We're using two inverted wingbacks. This wasn't possible last year, right? What's about to happen couldn't happen last year because these inverted wingbacks will stay narrow. This year, the inverted wingback enters the DM tier and immediately moves inside. The defensive midfielder, the Segundo Volante, he moves forward. Now the inverted wingback explains the DM. If we couldn't do this last year, we can do this now. So these are the roles that have been affected. The inverted fullback will now go from the fullback position to the central defender position when you have the ball. The inverted wingback will now go to the fullback position or the wingback position and then into the DM position. The libero will now move from the central defender's position into the defensive midfield position. With the midfielders, the halfback is the most interesting role of them all. Why? First, he can work in an offset 4-2-3-1 where, you know, he's not exactly in the center. Um, how he works with other roles can also change. So you need to experiment with the halfback to find out more. But what's more important to realize that for every single one of these roles, when they move into that tier, whoever is in that tier already, he will move to the side and make a new partnership with that role. There's no better way to explain the positional play feature than by replicating some of these tactics being used in real life. Let's begin with the one Tottenham Hotspur used with Enge Postikoglu. Naturally, this is my interpretation of what Tottenham Hotspur are playing. Diehard fans are probably going to see something else. I personally think they actually play with two free eights, two inverted wingbacks. Those free eights can come in, they can go out. But I like the idea of putting a central midfield on attack in that position because he's going to punch a hole right through the middle as the advance forward keeps those defenders at bay. Those two inside forwards have been told to stay wider so they'll attack the wider positions. When those two inverted wingbacks enter midfield, they are going to form a partnership with the, the other DM. They're going to be able to control the center of the park very well. That box is going to be very hard to break down. So whenever you use that inverted wingback, you're going to have to remember one thing. Those inverted wingbacks need pace and acceleration. And this is going to be one of those interesting tactics in the game. I expect the AI's version to be slightly different and harder to beat. So that when you play against the AI, my advice is do something about those inverted wingbacks. Either put a lot more pressure on them or attack the wider areas with wingers, forcing those inverted wingbacks to track back and defend. And yes, no other play instructions were harmed in making this tactic. The next is Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool, which gives us the chance to use the inverted fullback for the first time. Now, when you go into the game, an inverted fullback is going to act like another central defender. So what I've done is, We've got an inverted wing back on the right and an inverted full back on the left, which will be the Andy Robertson position. We've got two central defenders and a defensive midfielder in front of them. The inverted wing back is going to push into the center and form a partnership with the defensive midfielder. While the three at the back, the inverted full back, the central defender, and the other central defender will form a partnership. 
What you need to do is to give the stay wider instruction to the right-sided central defender so that he pushes slightly wider. This will encourage you to have a nice balanced backline and the Mazala up in front will work together with the winger on the right flank. Now, some of you are going to ask me this question. Why is Mo Salah a winger? Well, if you look very carefully at Liverpool's transitions when they're using Trent Alexander-Arnold, they actually try to get Mo Salah to stay as wide as possible when he comes inside. So that was the reason why I went with the winger. With the Mazala on attack, we get a really good dynamic between these two roles out wide. And then up front, we're using a complete forward on attack and an inside forward on attack on the left flank for Luis Diaz's position. No other PIs were used in this tactic. Are you still looking for download links for these tactics? No, no, no. There are no download links for these tactics. Go and try. Have fun with Football Manager 24. Don't be afraid to break the game. They're pixels after all. Next, we're going to have some fun with the Libero and Manchester City. Now, when I created this tactic, I had very much John Stones in mind. Now, but with a certain twist. We're going to have a slightly different setup, but we're going to try and get that Libero very involved in the build-up. We're going to have two inverted fullbacks. They're going to tuck inside, forming a three. The Libero will push up, but this is the important part. The ball-playing defender is going to play on cover because lately, Manchester City's transitions are more like a diamond. That ball-playing defender is usually the last man with the two inverted fullbacks wide enough that they can sometimes double up as wingbacks on defense, which is something that the inverted fullback on defense will do if there's nothing better to do down the flanks. They attack the flanks. Then we've got a DM on support, a box-to-box -box midfielder, and a Mazala on attack. Out wide, this is interesting. We're using wingers instead of inside forwards and a complete forward. Let me explain why. Something interesting I noticed very early in Football Manager 24 was what would happen to play when you use wingers as opposed to inside forwards. If I use two inside forwards, they attack the space. The central midfields, they don't really attack the center so much. But when I use wingers, they stretch the field of play, come in late to score goals, especially if you're, they're on the flank opposite their preferred foot. More importantly, the guy in the middle, he comes in to score lots of goals. And that was what was happening with Phil Foden. Phil Foden kept surging in to score goals. He would come in unmarked because the wingers were dragging away the defenders along with the advanced forward or the complete forward. You can use both the roles. They work just as well. I don't claim this to be the, you know, the mother of all replications. I just want to have fun scoring goals in as many different ways as possible using the new roles and the positional play feature. One important thing though, in this tactic, I do use dribble more on the ball playing defender and the libero. Because you remember what I said last year, there's nothing better than a player that drives their defenses dribbling. And this team is loaded with players who can dribble with the ball. So why not? They just keep pushing the defenders, the opposite team, deeper and deeper as they attack. Something I love about the game. So what do you think of these tactics? Do you have any interesting ideas you want to share? Hop on to my stream. I stream five times a week. I look forward to hearing from you. Meanwhile, you guys stay safe. Take care of yourselves. There are plenty of nice videos out there for you to go and check out. Have fun playing Football Manager 24. The beta.